Hi guys, it's Becky and today is my birthday and one of the things I want to do on my birthday is make some jewelry. So I'm going to make some jewelry using the Silver Silk Playtime Challenge Kit. And this might look a little different from some of the other videos that you have seen and that's because Neele did totally different like colorways, different beads. Um, he put stuff together to kind of make, uh, to make it interesting and different. And part of the challenge is working with something that maybe somebody else isn't working with, <laughs> but it's a challenge for you because it's something you might not have worked with before. So what he did was he, uh, put together these kits with a color of silver silk capture chain and I got this antique copper colorway and I figured out why it's because if you ordered something else at the same time he kind of based his decisions for what he was sending you on what else you ordered and so I had ordered some of this three needle chain which is one of the newer things and it is antique copper color so probably going to just throw this in and use this with my playtime kit as I'm making some things. Um, I was playing around let's see, yesterday with this three needle chain and putting on an end with some craft wire. And so I'll probably do that on the other end and I'll do like a multi-strand or something necklace and this will just be one of the strands um some of the beads that in here have a fairly wide hole so i think that they will string really nicely on the three needle chain so that's that's another reason why i'm, I'm planning on on probably using that but some of the other contents of the kit was you got a single end connector you got two of those he sent some coordinating 22 gauge craft wire, which I'm going to be supplementing with some additional 22 gauge craft wire, antique copper, and then an assortment of beads and findings. Um, I've got these end caps here, which are antique copper color, um, and I thought I would use those and some ball head pens that I've got here and make some drops with these really gorgeous blue faceted beads. They're like, I don't know what the uh, the gemstone is, the name of it. I will probably look it up in a little bit, but they're like, it's this really, really beautiful, like sky blue color. And I think they're really gorgeous. I was thinking of having them, a bunch of drops spaced out between these large hole beads on the, uh, the three needle chain. And then I was going to use a drop or two in an earring design. And I sort of have ideas. I don't know exactly how it's going to work. Um, I want to be able to do some wire wrapping with this beautiful stone focal like can we just talk about how cool rocks are man like you just have like little bits and bobs that like hang out for a while and then after a while sediment compacts together or it becomes hardened or it becomes heated up or something like that and it turns into like rocks it is so cool man I love rocks. Rocks are the best. Rocks rock. But anyway, so like, I'm, I'm glad I got these stone pieces because it's, it's really, really appealing to me. Um, there are some more stone beads. They're these big, heavy guys. And I think we're going to do some wire wrapping with those. I grabbed some 20 gauge wire as well in the same colorway um, because it's more heavy duty so I think it could withstand holding some heavier beads a little bit more um, and I just want to do uh, some wire some beaded links in a chain I think and look at these 
Look at this stone. It is beautiful. I'm just going to do a beaded link with this and leave it as it is with its gorgeous, gorgeous stoneness. So that we've got that. Um, but I'm going to do a focal with this and probably, maybe I'm going to try doing um, like a herringbone wrap with some of these Czech glass beads. They're um, like matte, dark olive color, forest green. Um, Check glass beads. It looks like they're six millimeter ones. Or are these four? No, those are six, I think. And then we've got some of these like Kelly green um, beads as well. And like I said, there were these uh, large hole beads in this kind of brown but Picasso finish colorway and then there was just a huge long strand of these gorgeous dark blue pearls and so I think I'm going to grab the pearls these green beads and these and do like a herringbone wrap around this stone I'm going to try it out um, see how it works for me um, and then I'm going to have these stone drops and these drops that I already I been was playing around with these the other day. I already made a couple of drops. So these are going to be earrings. And I'm going to use some of the capture chain in the earrings. And I'm also going to use some wire wrapping. So we're going to do a lot of wire wrapping with this. Um, but one of the things that I thought of with the um, the thing is I we got these trumpety like flower cap end caps. And I think that that would be a great place to, to have like the, a multi-strand connector connected to this. So we're going to do that. I'm probably going to string some of the pearl beads along um, as one of my strands. But we're also going to use them in because, I mean, there's enough. <laughs> you can use it for a lot of different things. So we're going to use those. And probably let's go ahead and throw these in here with the, the earring findings since we've got several of these. So I'm gonna go with those. Let me get uh, let me get these drops made, and then we will wrap our focal. Our we'll wire wrap our focal after I get these drops made. Now, um, I just grabbed what I thought were antique copper um, ball head pins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Um, but I think they're actually antique bronze. But I don't think anybody's going to really notice. Let me get a little bit closer here. Nobody's going to really notice that that's a little bronze ball hanging out at the bottom of the, the drops. And honestly, if somebody's that close to my chest when I'm wearing this, they're not going to be looking at my necklace. You know, like, let's, let's be real honest here. <laughs> All right, so since I'm, I'm close up, I'm going to go ahead and stay here where I'm at while we do these. All right, one, two, three, four. And, yeah, I wanted to also, when I, I did these drops, I just wanted the bottom to be the part of it because I want as much of this gorgeous stone to show. So that's that's one of the reasons why my I'm only using half or one of the the uh because rocks rocks rock they're they're fantastic they're they're amazing I love rocks come on friend what you doing let's get a couple more of these guys out of here all right so for this just dropping that down to the bottom, sticking one of my faceted gemstone beads. And I really need to look up the, the thing. I'll look it up before I post and I'll put it in the comments what, uh, what stone this is because uh, it's beautiful. And I think I might need more of this in my life. Like, good call, Neely. This was this was exactly what I needed. By the way, it's my birthday. So this is my birthday is making this this kit, um, which is just right up my alley because I am, um, I love challenges. Like, if you want me to do something, make it a challenge. Make it a game. 
you know, like this is how you motivate me to do things. Um, which I guess probably would have come in a lot more handy when I was a kid, if my mom had known this. Um, <laughs> you know, like, oh boy. Yeah, I, I have that kind of personality. And I'm just doing little wrapped, wrapped loops at the tops of my drops. And we'll have these little dangles. So let me finish this up. And then we will, once I've got all my drops made, we'll start wrapping this stone. Now that I'm closer, let's, let's take another deeper look at this. Like, I don't want to wrap around it in the middle and obscure any of the striations or um, anything like that. So that's why I'm thinking herringbone, because it'll be all around the outside and it'll kind of highlight it and accentuate it. So that's my thinking on that. So let me do that. Oh, also, maybe before I turn this off, um, let me grab this 20 gauge wire because it's going to be more, more heavy duty for some beaded links. And let me show you how I'm going to be doing those. Actually, let's go ahead and I'm going to work off the spool because I'd like to be able to do like a wrapped loop on one end. So I'm basically going to turn it away from me and then bend this towards me and all the way around and that gets you a nice nice round thing on that end and I think if I do both ends wrapped then I will be using jump rings between them and I think that is what I'm going to want to do so I'm going to wrap both ends and then use some jump rings so let me do that. Just tucking that in. Okay, and now that should give me enough to finish my wrap on the other side. So for that, I'm going to use this so that I've got uh, equal measurement for how much of the uh, of the wire I can use for wrapping and I'm just bending this back away from me. See that gives me some wrapping area. And now I'm going to use, I'm just using the, the smallest loop on this for wrapping. This is my six step bail making pliers. I love them. I use them for everything. Well, not everything, but a lot of things. And then I bend it around towards me. And I'm just using my fingers for this. I may end up needing to grab my pliers because when the uh, the wire gets shorter, um, I don't have as much leverage and it gets harder to turn and to twist. So I'm going to do this for each of these other stone beads. And I'm going to do my, my dangles. And once I've got those all finished, I will come back and we will wrap our focal. All right, I am back and I have made all of my little drops with these faceted blue beads and I'm going to keep one of them for my focal and I have grabbed some copper anti-copper colored jump rings to attach all of my wrapped links and I haven't attached all of them because it's going to be one on one side one on the other um, but I am going to wrap my focal and that's what we're going to do now. 
So let me move these guys out of the way because I don't need them right now. I don't need any of these. I just need my stone. This little drop is going to be on the end. I'm going to have these Kelly Green Foresty Emerald Check Glass Beads. That's going to be a big part of this. And then we're going to have the Dark Olive Check Glass Beads. It's going to be another big part of this. And some of the pearls. I'm just going to pull them out this way. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's going to take a little less time than grabbing them by hand and doing it that way. All right. So I've got a bunch of beads, some accurate measurement, bunch of beads, right? So I've got the pearls, we've got these green beads, we've got these other green beads, and then the blue bead. And I want all of these beads to be part of the, fo the focal so that it draws the multiple strands like together. Anyway, that's just my thinking on that. And I pulled off about two feet of 22 gauge wire because I don't know how much I'm going to need for my wraps, but I figure that's going to be enough. And I think about six inches in is where I'm going to make my first loop. So let me grab this and I'm just going to make a loop here. It's going to be a wire wrapped loop. Why are you being awkward about it? Alright. And I'm going to stick my dangle on here so that it's at the bottom of my focal because I want there to be a loop at the bottom and a loop at the top. And then there's going to be a little wrapped stem from the loop to the bead, the focal bead. And that's what I'm going to wrap my, um, my herringbone around. So I've got the three beads that I'm going to be doing the herringbone with here. So I'm going to want to wrap to about here so that there's room for all of those. So I'm just going to grab my my wire and just start wrapping. And I'm going to actually tighten this up a little bit with my pliers. if I've got the wrap in place it'll actually give me something to wrap the herringbone around this is something I watched Sarah Lovecraft do when she did a beaded herringbone thing it was really cool Let's see if I can find a link to the video she did I'm going to borrow that technique for this because it was really smart. Really, really smart. Okay, is that enough room? Nope. I'm going to do a little bit more.
because the beads will be kind of stacked up a little bit more. And I don't want the herringbone to be too crowded. I think that's perfect. All right, let's. So I've got my coil here. Cut that off. I can use these for ear wires. You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to make some ear wires with that. It's going to be great. For the earrings. So I'm gonna make some earrings today too. Alright. Now this is just gonna be a real long video. So I'm kinda glad I went ahead and stopped it to do all the wrapped links and and other things so that you didn't have to sit here for this whole time. So the idea is going to be to have several circles of beads around here. And let me measure this using my nope. a little bit longer than that. So how about right there? So I'm going to bend this that way. I'm going to use my third step in my six step band making pliers. So it's smallest, smallest to largest, it's the third one. And if uh, the smallest is the first, so this one right here. I'm going to wrap this wire around twice. to make my bale. I just want it to be nice and secure. So now that I've got my loop, I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to wrap it down. Oh, is that? No, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, just keep on wrapping. Like Dory, keep on swimming, keep on wrapping. Hmm. I think I need to. Expand that, I think. Well, okay. That's fine. I think I might be deforming my loop a little bit. You know what? I actually kind of like this. The way this looks with this, the two different sizes. One bigger, one smaller. All right. It was a happy accident. That's what that was. This wrapped. Without bending this 22 gauge wire too much. I think that's actually going to be enough for the start of this. So I hope I have enough wire for the rest of this wrap. Let's get these on here. 
I'm not quite sure how many I'll need, so I'm going to just put some on. I can take some off if I need to. I'm going to start with the biggest and work our way out to the smallest. Because there are fewer of these bigger beads than there are of the smaller beads. So let's find out if this is enough too much. All right, it looks like I have one bead too many. Okay. Come on. I'm trying to hold this in place while also bending this around here without pulling it too taut because that would bend some things out of shape. And that is the first pass, or the first wrap of this hairy bone. And so I'm going to grab some beads for the other side. And I think I'm going to just be okay with some of these sliding around like that. All right. Let's string on some beads for the other side. Is that six, two, three, four, five, six, um, maybe I do have room for one more over here. Let me just add one more. Looks like it's going to be an uneven amount, and that's cool. That's cool. Actually, should I redo that? No, because I've already made bends in the wire. Okay. Hold on to it while I wrap it. I am sending all of my pearls flying. All right. All right, now let's get some pearls on here. Wrap all the pearls, all the pearls. curious about and I'm gonna try it and see if it works it's entirely possible that I'll ruin it but I'm curious if this three needle chain is going to be supple enough to tie a knot with because that that would be an interesting way of using it I am losing more of my pearls, but there's more in the kit, so I can grab from there if I need to. I just, I'm dropping them all on the floor, which is okay, because I know where the floor is. I can find them. Yeah, today I am doing only the things that I want to do, and one of the things I want to do is beading. So I'm doing this challenge this morning. 
And then this afternoon, I think I can fit one more on here, so I'm going to grab that. This afternoon, I'm going to be doing a beading class with Cassandra Spicer from Beads to Live By. Um, she usually does classes live, but she started doing uh, some virtual options. So I signed up for a virtual option for doing some seed bead, seed bead, bead weaving today, this afternoon. So let's get this wrapped around. There we go. And now let's add some more, some more pearls. Yeah, my family's going to take care of all the stuff that I normally do, so I don't have to do any chores today. Pretty good, pretty good birthday. I'm not going out to celebrate or anything. I'm just gonna have a day of fun and relaxing. I'm gonna hang out with my dogs. Uh, I started watching the new season of Good Omens last night, so I'll finish that up later. All in all. been pretty good. Right. You know, I feel like it's a little bit wonky because I should have had one more bead on this inside one. But I'm okay with it. I'm going to just keep going with it. Because this is, this is what we're doing. We're just having fun. We are having fun. Having a beady good time. And I'm the only one who's going to be wearing it, so. Yeah. Like, obviously, if I was making it for, like, someone else, I would want it to be perfect. But I'm making it for me. And I enjoy imperfections. You know, the whole wabi-sabi concept. Beauty in imperfection. That's why sometimes messy wraps are the best. I think I've got room for one more pearl. There we go. And then I will switch to my dark green check glass beads. All right, so we've got this. Let's wrap it around here yep we've got room for one more this is just gonna twist around I think that's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine Now, let's get these dark, dark green beads strung on. We, I, he gave us two full strands of these, so I should have enough. Like, that's the thing when Neely does these kits. He just, like, piles it full of stuff. Like, here, have fun. <laughs> it's pretty great like I also you know sometimes I'll, I'll buy a kit and I'll be like oh I'm going to make stuff and then it just sits there and I don't do anything with it which is why again I really appreciate him making this into a challenge because it means that I'm going to actually do it instead of just think about doing it someday and having my pretty pretties sit in a cabinet or drawer or
boxed area. There you go. Ha, I like it already. It's very woodsy. This is very, very going away to summer camp. But the pearls, like, they just kind of um, make it a little fancier. You know? In fact, I think there might have been beads this color in the camp out kit from Softflex, this green color. Let me see if I can fit one more on here. Yes. One more and it looks like my estimate for how long to do this was spot on. All right. Now I'm just going to grab my tweezer nose pliers and kind of tamp down all of these spots where the uh, the crossover happened here. Just to kind of finalize that. And now whoop, I think I may have just accidentally cut the perfect amount of wire that I need to finish this. So let's get the rest of these dark green um, beads on my wire and already this focal is going to be like boom <laughs> boom 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 uh, I love it it's very 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 out there it's it's already a little on the heavy side which is why I'm kind of glad that for these I grabbed the 20 gauge wire and I did wrapped loops for them too because they're they're gonna take some weight gonna be holding up the world on their shoulders which like I mean I'm sure you guys can relate to that the world on your shoulders thing I think I've got room for two more. Two more, two more. <gasps> yes, I do. I have room for two more. All right, so I'm going to get this bent around here. And then I'm going to wrap it the rest of the way up around here. Right, and again, I'm going to do the same thing on this end where I just kind of flatten out the herringbone crossovers a little bit on this wire. And it's wonky, but it's beautiful. There we go. All right, so I've got my focal. Let's get these beads. I'm not going to put them back in here yet because I am going to be stringing them on some soft flex wire because this is a multi strand thing. So I'm going to set, just push these over here for now. And now I'm going to construct my first strand. 
and I'm going to use these jump rings that I grabbed. And I'm going to use a jump ring to connect this end with the, um, what's, you know, the word, the little bale I made up at the top of this. You guys, you guys want to see it a little bit closer? It's, it's the mountains, basically, in in a bead format. I sort of love it. All right, let's get the jump ring open. And because I have them handy, I'm just, and they've got this flat part of it at the end, I like to use this to open and close jump rings. So I've got it open. Let's go ahead and stick that end on here. And then close it. There we go. So I've got one end connected. Now let's get the other end connected here Back out a little bit. All right. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. And so we're going to need to connect this to a loop in here. And that's going to be our first strand in our multi strand necklace. So everything else needs to be a little bit shorter. Than this so that they dangle above it. So I'm going to leave this out as my reference for that and let's go ahead and string on. Hmm. Question is, do I do like a string with the pearls and the check beads? alternating now let's just do a strand of the check beads and a strand of the of the pearls all right so I've got my soft flex I am going to just string some beads and it's entirely possible that I might just speed this up this section so that you guys don't have to watch me do fumbling around for bead holes as I do.
Hopefully you enjoyed the little time lapse of that with stringing instead of having me sit here doing the stringing for like a while. It took me a little while to do that. Got a little bead stopper, so I've got these. Um, got some copper crimp tubes that I'm going to be using to go ahead and make loops on the ends of these when I get to the part where I'm putting all this together. So I've got one strand, two strands, three strands, and I'm going to put together my fourth strand. I know how to count, I promise. And to do that, I'm going to be using this three needle chain that I bought separately, but it's the reason why I got the, uh, the antique copper colorway of this. And I didn't have specific plans for it when I bought it, so it's going to work out pretty nicely. Um, I actually have a lot of beads left over, so I might do some bracelets or something after that. But for this project... I'm just going to do the necklace and some earrings. And it's this three needle chain. It is a knitted wire chain. It's very lightweight. It's pretty supple. And I'm wondering if it's supple enough that I can do like a barrel knot with it. I'm going to, I'm going to try, I'm going to find out, I'm going to see what I, it, what will work with it. But first I want to see how this will work for stringing these on. Now it's got, these beads have a nice wide hole, so they're gonna string really nicely onto here. And then I've got these drops in between. So I'm just gonna string these onto the three needle chain. We're gonna see how long this is. We're doing one or two between. I have enough of the, the large beads I could do two between each drop. I think that might give them more space between them. All right, so let's do two of the large beads and one drop. Oh, hey, mister. And if that is too long and it's not going to fit in the space for my my other strands, then I can always reduce it back to two of these. I might not do a barrel knot in this. I might save that for another, let's see if it works, sort of video. These beads would probably fit pretty well on like some uh, small leather cord. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's figure out how far away from the end. <laughs> I'm just gonna let these guys, I'm um, letting them go along here. All right. So I'm going to need to figure out where. All right. So that can be my first strand. And then I can have these two 
kind of below that. And this one. I kind of love it already. Okay, yeah, I, I like I like the way this is shaping up. I like the cut of this jib. All right, I'm going to do an experiment. All right, I think if I have a barrel knot that ends about here. Let's just try that. Where is a thing I can use for that? Let's use. There should be. Oop. Is this gonna bend it all out of shape though? That's the question. Right. It's entirely possible that I'm going to ruin the end of my. my thing. Let's go ahead and get our tweezers through here. Grab onto that. Oh no! Dang it. Real, real careful. Mm. Kind of looks like a little tumbleweed. But it kind of also looks like a little wire bead. Oh, no. Why am I so... I did not mean to do that. My, my carefully strung... I left, uh, I left them unclamped. And now I am making a mess with them. Whew. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Stick our bead stopper back on there while I work out this other one. Yeah, just let stuff get complicated. That's 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 what that's how we do. Let's make let's make it unnecessarily complicated, Bex. All right, so kind of got myself a little bit of a barrel knot there. 
but that is too close to the rest of this. So what I'm going to do is because I can probably use this in a bracelet, I'm going to go ahead and cut off as much as will fit on a bracelet of this. And I'm going to take these off of here. I'm going to set this aside and save it for another day because I have plenty of other three needle chain to work with. All right, let me get that strung back on here again. I mean, that was a fun experiment, but I don't think it was very effective. And I will, I will do something with this at a later date. Maybe, we'll see. In the meantime, let's do this again. Fun, fun, fun. I think maybe we'll speed this. we're strung again and now I can do my little trick with some craft wire to make a little connector point at the end of this and it might actually end up looking better than the first one that I did so what I'm doing with this is I'm going to make a little wrapped loop at the end of this Actually, no, this one goes this way. Okay. So I'm going to do the first wrap just like this. Before I get to my second wrap, I am going to bend over the end of this chain with my pliers. Gonna flatten it first and then bend it over so that we don't have sharp edges out there. And then let's get close so you guys can see what I'm doing. And then now that that's bent over, I'm just going to hook that bent over part onto the wire that I'm wrapping with. And this is the tricky part because I need to be able to wrap around the wire while also wrapping around the chain. Like this. I'm gonna do, let's do five wraps. I feel like that'll be good. Now I'm gonna take my pliers and I'm going to smoosh my wraps close together so that they are better looking. And I'm also gonna rotate this to tighten my wraps up. because I don't want that chain going anywhere. So now I'm going to cut off my excess wire. All I want left attached to this little loop here is my chain. So I'm gonna very, very, very carefully cut off my excess wire there. I'm going to very, very, very carefully 
slide this between my chain and this wire that was my uh, my stabilizing wire down the center that I was wrapping around. I'm going to cut that off. And now I have a loop at the end of my three needle chain. Ta-da! All right, now let's scooch you along and figure out where I'm going to place my loop for my other end of my three needle chain. I think, I think about about here is going to be good. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of room for bending and cut this off. Oh, why didn't you cut? There we go. Get rid of my little excess bits of wire. This way you'll be able to see the three needle chain. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat it on camera because repetition is great for learning. And I'm using 22 gauge craft wire for this, by the way, not the 20 gauge. So let's go ahead and grab some of this craft wire. I think about like three or four inches is good. All right, it's a wire wrapped loop. I'm going to want this little bit for my stem. Gonna wrap it around here. And I'm just going to do my first wrap without the chain in the way. Like so. And the stem is going to give me something to wrap around the chain and this to give it some stability so that it holds. Let me pull this up here. All right, so the end of the chain, I'm gonna bend it over. I'm gonna just flatten this out. Bend it. And one of the reasons I like the uh, these tweezer nose pliers is I get a nice sharp bend in my wire things. So now that I've got my little bend, I'm going to have it hooked over this wire. And this is the tricky part because you've got to pinch the loop and this wire as you're pushing this around the whole thing. And then once you get around it a couple times, you can hold the rest of it in order to do your wraps. I'm trying to keep my wraps tight next to each other. How many did I do on the other one? Five? One, two, three, four, one more. Okay. There we go. I think that looks good. It gives me a loop to attach this chain to when I combine all of my multi strands. So now I've got some excess wire I need to get rid of. Cut so carefully, guys, when you do this. Cut very carefully so you don't cut your three needle chain. Definitely just kind of slide this in between there. All right, there we go. My three needle chain has a little cord end, basically. I know, like glue it in cord ends work for this and all of that, but this is just something I was playing around with and I came up with for a little wire wrapped cord end for this three needle chain. And I didn't have to glue it in and it's in there pretty securely. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with the results of that. 
All right, so now that I've got these strands, let me, let me grab these and just crimp them. I've got my crimps. Let me crimp some loops on that, and that way I don't have to worry about any of the other things. I'm going to leave these three ends in here, and I'm going to grab my crimp tubes and my magic crimper. I'm just going to crimp some loops. to being finished with the necklace still have to do um earrings at the end of all of this maybe we'll do earrings later but maybe we'll just do a necklace today and earrings later and all right so i think i think i'm gonna need some jump rings to make this thing a little bit longer so let me grab out some jump rings do a little bit of a tail and then in order to connect these I'm going to do um, some wrapped loops with the uh, the 20 gauge wire and then put it through this and then we will attach our silver silk to it to make it into a necklace let me back up a little bit so you can see where I'm at it's a little bit of a mess I've got little bits of wire everywhere I've got little bits of the silver silk everywhere that's fine because it just means that I have been working on this this is a really great way to to scooch these off your bead mat by the way it's just one of these bead scoops slide it along it gets lint it gets dog hair <laughs> and gets the whole thing all right so let's get so I've got this done I've got whoop, get this strand done I've got my pearls done I've got my I've got this one and I think I'm just gonna do just so it hangs a little bit lower than the others actually let's let's start looping it actually maybe no 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 Come on, Bex. Let's do some jump rings. Okay, so these are marginally smaller than the big ones between these, and that's going to be fine. Let's just do a small chain of these. And maybe yep 
maybe two of them? Two jump rings? Maybe three? Let's find out. I can always add more jump rings after I get this connected because that's the great thing about jump rings is I can open and close them. If it's too long, I can just, you know, remove one. So I'm going to start with two. Oh, come on, buddy. Pretty sure. These are magnetic because these jump rings are clinging to them. Which means that these jump rings are not copper. All right. Yeah, move those jump rings out of the way. Let's get these guys connected. All right. Um, wrapped loops for all of these so I'm going to cut off it's like about three and a half maybe four inches I am not measuring these so I don't know exactly how long this is but I'm gonna make a little loop here Before I finish wrapping it, I am going to add all of my strands. So I'm going to add this jump ring. Once again, I can remove the jump ring if this ends up being too short or too long, even after I do my loop. All right, so I've got all four strands on my loop. Grab my pliers so I can hold on to this loop. Keep it from closing up. I'm just going to do a little wrapped loop here. I think two wraps is going to be good. That'll, that'll hold things nicely. And it's going to be inside of this little bead cap. Like this. So let me go ahead and wrap this top loop. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, 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 no. Don't wrap the top loop yet, Bex. Because I'm going to want the top loop to be attached to my silver silk cord. All right, and to do that, I am going to need to... I'm missing some ball chain in this end. So I'm going to start from here. I need to cut off enough of this to do kind of a drop earring with this. So let's just let's cut off some chain, cut off some more chain, and then I'll use the rest for my necklace. I guess so that'll be for earrings. Got little bits of chain that need to detangle. There we go. Alright, let's 
so it will be very long which means it can go over my head and I won't need a clasp although there is a clasp in this kit thanks Neely this is gonna be an over the head guy I said thanks Neely because Neely always forgets clasps it's a thing I will use the clasp for something else though. Like, holy cow, yeah, these are definitely clinging to, this is this is a clasp that came in a kit that, that Neelai did. And I'm wearing it because it's beautiful and wonderful and I want to wear fun colors. I've actually got um, some rainbow earrings on to go with this. These are, um, I just made these actually. Um, it's a, let me turn it around so you can see it. Uh, there's these forms uh, the Softlax was doing, these forms, and then selling little Delica kits to go with it. And so I grabbed the Delica kit and these little bead forms, and then I followed a tutorial for these earrings. I'll put a link for that tutorial. It's for um, beaded hoops, but the, um, the bead count was accurate for fitting on the this uh, the speed form so I'll put a link to that tutorial in there if you want to do this um, but yeah I made these this is a kit that Neela put out it's really fun because you learn how to do like these chain mail ends on your capture chain but it has this fun magnetic clasp and there was another magnetic clasp that came in this kit this is the reason I, I brought all of that out there's a little magnetic clasp that came in this kit but I'm doing a claspless necklace necklace so I will save that clasp for another project all right so I've got my silver silk cord ends come on buddy all the way in there Let's get this done and that way when I do my wrapped loop on this end I can connect it to my necklace all right all the way in there oh, you know what I'm gonna need to open this up a little bit I'm gonna do that by sticking my pliers in and just kind of widening the mouth because I wasn't getting my ball chain as far back in there as I wanted it to be. Sometimes you gotta widen these a little bit because, you know, stuff happens in shipping or... Alright. Secure. Alright, so now that I've got my cord end here, now I can do a wrapped loop. Oh my gosh do a wraps loop and I'm gonna bend this back away from me and I'm gonna grab this and I'm actually gonna do my second one just because that way it'll be proportionate Oop, let's bend it all the way around there we go so now that I've got my, my loop, I can attach my silver silk chain to it and I can start doing some wrapping all the way down. That makes me pretty happy. All right, so I'm, I'm halfway done. Now I need to get the other half of this attached. Go. And I'm going to 
do that by grabbing myself another little length of 20 gauge wire. My little loop. Let's put this on the same order. <laughs> Look at that. My measurements were good. <laughs> that's gonna look great that's gonna hang great all right all right all right now let's wrap you a couple wraps I don't really need to tuck that because it is going to be inside this. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Already. Already. I love it. All right. Let's get this loop wrapped. Bend it back. Do the second loop for this top one. Bend it all the way around. And attach the other end of the silver silk cord. There we go. I'll wrap this sucker. And my necklace will be complete. The, uh, the earrings shouldn't take as long to do. Oh my gosh, I'm really, 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 really happy with this. Now, it's not the rainbows like I'm already wearing, but maybe I will wear this as my birthday necklace. Maybe. All right. Beautiful. Hold on. Let me do a fit check. Oh yeah, that dangles very nicely. Like there's a certain length that's really awkward for me. And it's the one where like the things dangle uh just above the bosom but if it's long enough to dangle over the bosom then it hangs pretty nicely so I will usually do things that are short enough not to hit that that awkward part but when I do like an over the head type project oh hello that's my backyard <laughs> and then I do an overhead type project. Um, I like for it to hang. And it does. It hangs very nicely. Um, this is short enough that the the dangles don't get in too much way of these others, but then the they kind of crisscross and overlap and it makes it more like a river because you've got like you've got it meandering. I love this. I'm just gonna say, this is great. Um, I am so glad I got this playtime kit from Miele. And I'm glad that I was able to put it together. But let's do the earrings. Like if you're not interested in the earrings, this is the part where you can probably turn off. But if you are interested in the earrings, let's do those. I'm gonna move my entire necklace over here. 
and I'm going to get out the bits and bobs that I'm going to be doing earrings with. And I'll just do one on camera. The other one I will do off camera because brevity. All right. So these are the bits that I want for my earrings. Ooh, let me grab this 22 gauge wire and make myself some ear wires real quick. Because that's one of my favorite things to do. It's to make myself ear wires with these. You do that with about three inches, two and a half, three inches of wire. Cut off both ends so that they're flush. And then I will bend my wire around the smallest step in my bail making pliers until they meet this end up here. Take them off. And I like the loop that I get with the largest loop in my bail making pliers. You could also use the second largest and probably have very nice ear wires, but I like the size and shape that I get with this because it just, it stays in my ears when I bend it around there like that. All right. And then we're gonna bend these back. Use the flush cutters to cut off the ends. And then usually what I will do, I'm not gonna do that in front of you, is I'll take a, um, like a metal file and I'll file the end of this to, uh, to flatten it out and smooth it out so that it's not pokey. And that's how I make my air wires. So we're gonna have these, they'll be part of this project. Um, and then I'm gonna just grab a bunch of 22 gauge wire because I think I'm gonna do some wire wrapping for these earrings. Let's see, about eight inches maybe. That might be nine. I don't know, how much is eight inches? You tell me. All right, now let's make a little loop down at the end of this wire. It's going to be another wrapped loop and I'm going to attach my dangle. I saved two of my dangles that I made specifically for the earrings so that it would go and be part of a set. Now, just going to wrap a couple of wraps. Not a lot, just enough to hold it. All right, now that that is wrapped, and tucked, I have this length of wire. I'm gonna take one of these, I'm gonna bend it so that both of these ends are together up here. I'm going to find the center of that bend. I'm going to insert this wire through that. So it goes through there. Now I'm going to place my drop bead through there. So that we're up here like this. And then I'm going to pull both of these ends together. I'm gonna pinch this, bend this around so that I can start wrapping. Come on, buddy the ends of this chain. I want to make sure that we wrap between the balls 
on this chain. Okay. Now that that's wrapped there, I'm going to go in here and around so that I'm coming up from between this. Okay, this messy wrap, it's gonna to be totally hidden by this. I said totally hidden. Maybe it's not totally hidden. Maybe if I squish it with this. Let's see. Just pull on this. Hmm. I just want this to fit into my end cap. So I'm squishing it a little bit to get it to fit. Why won't you fit? I'm going to call that good enough. Kind of had to manhandle it a little bit. But now, I make my little loop at the top of here for attaching my ear wire onto. Well, I'll do that a second time and then there'll be earrings and it'll be great. All right, I'm going to finish this up, then I'm going to post it in the competition page, and then I am going to go and enjoy the rest of my birthday, and I hope you guys have a really great weekend. I'm probably going to edit this on a day that's not my birthday, because I don't want to do things that I don't want to do on my birthday, and I don't want to edit this on my birthday, because that's a lot of work. But I'm really glad that I got to spend some time making stuff. And I hope you enjoyed it. Bye!